Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Hello, history buffs. Welcome back to another episode of the History AI Podcast. I'm Chuck, your resident history nerd. And I'm Marco, the co-pilot on this time-traveling adventure. Chuck, I've got to say, today's episode is one for the books. We're diving into the incredible lives of Chang and Ung Bunker, the original Siamese twins. That's right, Marco. These guys had a life story that's truly stranger than fiction. So, buckle up listeners, because this is going to be a wild ride through history. Let's start at the very beginning Chang and Ng Bunker were born on May 11, 1811, in a small village called Meklong, near Bangkok, Siam, which is modern-day Thailand. Their birth was remarkable for several reasons. That's right Marco Siam, at that time, was under the rule of King Rama II. The country was relatively isolated from Western influence, maintaining its own unique culture and traditions. The birth of conjoined twins in such a context was seen as both a wonder and an omen. Chang and Ng were conjoined twins, connected at the sternum by a small piece of cartilage. This kind of connection is medically referred to as syphopagus twins. Despite their physical connection, their livers were fused but functioned independently, which was a crucial aspect for their survival and overall health. Their parents were of Chinese descent. Their father, T.I., was a fisherman, and their mother, Nak, was a housewife. The family lived a modest life, working hard to make ends meet Chang and Ng were their last children, born into a family that already had several mouths to feed. From a young age Chang and Ng displayed a remarkable level of independence and resilience. Despite their physical condition, they learned to walk, run, and even swim, demonstrating an agility that defied the expectations of those around them. Their mother, Nock, was particularly protective of them, ensuring they were treated as normally as possible within their village. It's important to understand the cultural context of their upbringing. In early 19th century Siam, the birth of conjoined twins could have been viewed with fear and superstition. However, the villagers gradually accepted them, thanks to their lively spirits and the care taken by their family to integrate them into everyday life. As they grew older, their curiosity and intelligence became evident. They were eager learners and picked up the local dialect quickly. They also helped their family with daily chores, adapting to tasks despite the obvious challenges posed by their physical connection. Their early life in Siam was marked by a blend of traditional upbringing and the unique circumstances of their condition. It set the stage for the incredible journey they would embark on later in life. Little did they know, their path would soon lead them far beyond the borders of their small village. Indeed, their early years were just the beginning of an extraordinary life story. From the banks of the Meklong River to the bustling streets of 19th century America Chang and Eng's journey was about to take a dramatic turn. Fast forward to 1829, when fate intervened in the form of Robert Hunter, a Scottish merchant and part-time showman. Hunter was on a trading expedition in the Far East when he first laid eyes on Chang and Eng during a chance encounter near the Chow Friar River. Hunter was immediately struck by the twins' unique condition and saw a potential opportunity. He envisioned bringing them to the Western world, where public curiosity and fascination with human oddities were at an all-time high. After some negotiation, Hunter convinced Chang and Eng's mother, Nock, to let them travel with him. It was a heart-wrenching decision for her, but she ultimately agreed, hoping for a better future for her sons. Thus began the twins' journey to America. They first traveled to Singapore, where they boarded a ship bound for Boston, Massachusetts. The voyage was long and arduous, lasting several months. During this time Chang and Ng had to adapt to life at sea and the Westerners' curious and sometimes invasive attention. When they arrived in Boston in August 1829, they were an instant sensation. People flocked to see the Siamese twins, as they were dubbed, fascinated by their physical connection and the exotic stories of their homeland. Hunter arranged for them to tour major cities, showcasing their physical agility and sharing their story through lectures and public appearances. The early days of their tour were filled with excitement and novelty. They performed various feats of agility, demonstrating how they could swim, run, and even do acrobatics despite being conjoined. They also took questions from the audience, which ranged from curious inquiries about their daily lives to more invasive and sometimes insensitive questions about their condition. 
their fame quickly spread across the United States and Europe. They performed in cities like New York, Philadelphia, and London, drawing large crowds wherever they went. The income from these tours provided them with a level of financial independence they had never known before. However, their journey was not without its challenges. They faced prejudice and discrimination, often being treated as mere curiosities rather than human beings. The medical community, in particular, took a keen interest in them, with numerous doctors examining them and proposing various theories about their condition. Despite the challenges Chang and Ng maintained a remarkable level of dignity and resilience. They were intelligent and articulate, using their platform to educate the public about their lives and their homeland. Their ability to engage with their audience on an intellectual level helped to humanize them in the eyes of many. After several years of touring, the constant travel and public scrutiny began to take a toll on them. They longed for a more stable and private life. In 1839 they made the life-changing decision to settle down in America. They became naturalized citizens, adopting the surname Bunker, and chose Wilkesboro, North Carolina, as their new home. This decision marked the end of their days as performers and the beginning of a new chapter in their lives. It was a bold move, especially considering the cultural and social differences they had to navigate. But Chang and Ng were determined to build a life for themselves in their adopted country. Their journey from a small village in Siam to the bustling cities of America and Europe is a testament to their extraordinary resilience and adaptability. They transcended their condition and became pioneers in their own right, paving the way for a new understanding of human diversity. Wilkesboro was a small, rural town nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. The Bunkers purchased a 110-acre farm with the substantial earnings from their tours, which allowed them to live comfortably. They built a house and began to integrate into the local community, eager to start a new chapter away from the limelight. Their choice of North Carolina was significant for several reasons. Firstly, the rural setting provided a stark contrast to the bustling cities they had toured. It offered a peaceful environment where they could focus on farming and raising a family. Secondly, the South's agricultural economy suited their plans to become farmers and landowners. Despite being conjoined Chang and Ang were determined to live as normally as possible. They took to farming with enthusiasm, managing their land, and even participating in manual labor alongside hired hands. They grew tobacco, corn, and wheat, becoming successful and respected farmers in the community. Their integration into American society was remarkable. They became naturalized citizens, adopting the surname Bunker, which helped them assimilate. They were known for their strong work ethic and resourcefulness. Their neighbors initially viewed them with curiosity, but over time, they earned respect and acceptance. However, their life in North Carolina wasn't without its challenges. One of the more controversial aspects of their life was their involvement in the institution of slavery. Like many landowners in the South during that time, they owned slaves to help manage their farm. This fact complicates their legacy and serves as a reminder of the differences in eras in American history. In addition to their farming endeavors Chang and Eng were keen to establish themselves as family men. In 1843, they married sisters Adelaide and Sarah Yates, daughters of a local farmer. This arrangement was unique, to say the least. The couples maintained separate households, with Chang living with Adelaide and Ng with Sarah. They rotated between the two homes every three days. Their marriages drew considerable attention and skepticism from the public, but they proved their commitment to their families. Between them, they had 21 children Chang fathered 10, and Ng fathered 11. This large family necessitated a well-organized and cooperative lifestyle, but they managed to create a loving and supportive environment for their children. Education was important to Chang and Eng. They ensured that their children received proper schooling, valuing the opportunities that education could provide. Despite their unconventional family structure, they emphasized traditional values, discipline, and hard work. The Bunker's home life was filled with typical family activities, celebrations, and challenges. They faced the same joys and hardships as any family, from dealing with illnesses to celebrating milestones. They were dedicated fathers who took an active role in raising their children. Throughout their years in North Carolina Chang and Ng also became involved in their community. They attended church regularly and participated in local events, further solidifying their place in society. 
they made many friends and were known for their generosity and hospitality. Their story is one of adaptation and resilience. They transitioned from international performers to settled American farmers and family men. Despite their physical connection and the challenges it brought Chang and Ng carved out a life that was as ordinary as it was extraordinary. Their ability to navigate such a dramatic shift in lifestyle and find success and happiness is truly remarkable. Chang and Ng's settlement in America laid the foundation for the lasting legacy they would leave behind. As successful as Chang and Ng Bunker were in their early years as American farmers, their lives were not without significant financial struggles, particularly during and after the Civil War. The war, which lasted from 1861 to 1865, had a profound impact on their economic stability and overall well-being. Before the war Chang and Ng had established themselves as prosperous farmers in North Carolina. They had invested much of their earnings from their touring days into their farm and land. However, their decision to invest heavily in the Confederacy would soon prove to be a grave mistake. When the Civil War broke out, the Bunkers, like many of their neighbors, were supporters of the Confederacy. This was a common stance among southern landowners who relied on agriculture. Chang Anning owned about 18 slaves to help run their farm, which was typical for the time but is a controversial part of their legacy today. As the war progressed, the Bunkers' investments in their farm operations suffered greatly. The southern economy was devastated by the conflict, and the value of Confederate currency plummeted. By the end of the war, the Bunkers' financial situation had deteriorated drastically. They found themselves with worthless Confederate money and a significantly damaged economy. Additionally, the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 and the Fourteenth Amendment meant the end of slavery, which further impacted their labor force and economic model. They faced the daunting task of transitioning to a labor system that no longer relied on enslaved people, a challenge that many Southern farmers struggled with during Reconstruction. In an attempt to regain their financial footing Chang and Ng had to consider returning to their former life of public exhibitions. This was a difficult decision, as they had hoped to leave that part of their lives behind and focus on their family and farming. However, the dire economic circumstances left them with few options. From 1865 to 1869, the Bunkers embarked on another series of tours, this time with their children. They performed in various cities, including New York, Boston, and other major locations. These tours were not as financially successful as their earlier ones, partly because public interest had waned and there were new forms of entertainment capturing the public's attention. Despite their efforts, the financial returns from these tours were modest. Chang and Ng had to contend with their advancing age and declining health, which made the rigorous travel and performances more challenging. Chang's drinking problem, which had developed over the years, also contributed to their difficulties. Their financial woes were further compounded by family responsibilities. With 21 children between them, the costs of providing for such a large family were substantial. They faced mounting debts and struggled to make ends meet, even with the income from their renewed public appearances. It's important to note that the Bunkers' financial struggles did not diminish their determination to provide for their families. They worked tirelessly to support their children and ensure they had opportunities for education and a better future. Despite the economic hardships, they remained committed to their roles as fathers and providers. The Civil War and its aftermath were a period of significant hardship for Chang and Eng. Their experiences reflect the broader challenges faced by many Southern families during Reconstruction. The war had not only tested their financial resilience but also their ability to adapt to a rapidly changing social and economic landscape. Yet, through it all Chang and Eng's story is one of perseverance. They navigated the complexities of their time, faced adversity head-on, and continued to support their family against all odds. Their struggles during the Civil War era add another layer to their already extraordinary lives. Indeed, their resilience in the face of financial hardship and societal upheaval is a testament to their strength and determination Chang and Ng Bunker's legacy is not just about their physical condition but also about their enduring spirit in the face of monumental challenges. As Chang and Ng Bunker aged, the toll of their physical condition and the hardships they had endured became increasingly apparent. Chang's drinking problem had exacerbated his health issues, and both brothers experienced a decline in their overall well-being. Their remarkable bond, both physical and emotional, was about to face its ultimate test. On January 17, 1874 Chang woke up feeling seriously ill. 
Over the years, he had developed chronic bronchitis, which was compounded by a stroke he had suffered a few years earlier. That morning, he was particularly weak and unwell. Despite Aang's insistence on calling for a doctor, Chang passed away in the early hours of the morning, likely from a cerebral blood clot. Aang found himself in an unimaginable situation. For the first time in their lives, he was alone yet still physically connected to his deceased brother. Aang's shock and grief were profound. A doctor was called in hopes of performing an emergency separation, but Aang's health rapidly declined, and he passed away just a few hours later. The deaths of Chang and Aang Bunker marked the end of an extraordinary life story that had spanned continents and defied the odds. Their bodies were examined by several doctors, and an autopsy revealed that separating them during their lifetime would have likely resulted in the death of one or both, due to the shared blood vessels and the extent of their conjoined liver. The Bunker brothers were buried in Mount Airy, North Carolina. A single grave marker commemorates their lives, symbolizing their inseparable bond in life and death. Their passing did not mark the end of their story however, as their legacy continued to evolve and influence future generations. Chang and Aang's legacy is multifaceted. They have become symbols of resilience and adaptability, showing that physical limitations do not define a person's potential. Their lives have provided valuable insights into the medical field, particularly concerning conjoined twins. Numerous studies and medical papers have been inspired by their unique physiology, contributing to advancements in surgical techniques and the understanding of human development. Their impact extends beyond medicine. Chang and Ng have been referenced in literature, theater, and film. Their story has inspired books, plays, and even a Broadway musical. They have been portrayed as figures who challenged societal norms and perceptions of disability, prompting discussions about human diversity and the treatment of individuals with physical differences. The Bunker's descendants have also played a significant role in preserving and honoring their legacy. Family reunions are held regularly, celebrating the unique heritage and history of the Bunker family. These gatherings serve as a testament to the enduring legacy of Chang and Ng highlighting the strength and unity that have been passed down through generations. Additionally, the town of Mount Airy has embraced the Bunkers as an integral part of its history. The Surrey Arts Council has dedicated efforts to educate the public about their lives, ensuring that the story of Chang and Eng remains alive in the collective memory of the community. The legacy of Chang and Eng Bunker is a reminder of the power of human spirit and determination. Their lives were marked by extraordinary challenges, but they faced each obstacle with courage and resilience. They built families, integrated into society, and left an indelible mark on the world. Their story continues to inspire and educate, reminding us of the importance of empathy, understanding, and the celebration of human diversity. Chang and Ng Bunker were more than just conjoined twins, they were pioneers who navigated a complex world with grace and dignity. As we reflect on their lives, we are reminded of the incredible journey they undertook, from a small village in Siam to becoming icons of human perseverance. Chang and Ng's legacy is a testament to the enduring strength of the human spirit. That's all for today's episode folks. We hope you enjoyed this dive into the lives of Chang and Ng Bunker. Their story is a powerful reminder of the strength of the human spirit. If you liked this episode, please rate, subscribe, and share the podcast. A 5-star review really helps us reach more people and continue to grow. And don't forget, you can suggest topics for future episodes through our social media channels. We'd love to hear your ideas. Also, we've got some cool merchandise available now. Check out the link in the show notes. Every episode is evergreen, so you can listen to them anytime and share with friends. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, keep exploring history and stay curious. Discover the dark, enchanting world of Shadow Journeys, the tales of Jordan and Squishy. Follow Jordan, a seemingly innocent girl with a hidden power, and her loyal companion Squishy, who reincarnates into different animals after each battle. Venture into the ominous depths of the Whispering Woods as they face fierce creatures and uncover ancient secrets. Will Jordan succumb to the darkness within, or will she find the strength to forge a new destiny? Perfect for fans of dark fantasy and epic quests, this spellbinding tale will captivate and leave you pondering the fine line between hero and villain. Dive into Shadow Journeys today.
Available on Amazon now.